ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नमो ओम विष्णु बनाय कृष्ण बसाय बुद्धय श्रीमारे भक्त वेदांत स्वामी नीति नमने नमस्ते सरस्वत देव गौरवाणी प्रचार ने नर्वशेष शून्यवादि पाश्चात्य श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार शिव श्री गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे reading from Shema Bhav in Canto 10, Chapter 29, Verse 27. Sravana Dashna Janan Mai Bhavo no Kirtanat Natata Sani Karshena Pratyata Tato Grahan Shravanat, by hearing, Darshanat, by viewing, Jnana, by meditation, Mai, for me, Baba, love, Anu Kirtanat, by subsequent chanting, Na, not, Tata, in the same way, Sannikarsena, by physical proximity, Pratyata, please return, Tata, therefore, Grihan, to your homes. Translation, transcendental love for me arises by the devotional processes of hearing about me, seeing my deity form, meditating on me, and faithfully chanting my glories. Uh, the same result is not achieved by mere physical proximity. So please go back to your homes. For a part of Krishna certainly presenting formidable arguments. Text 28. Sukadeva Goswami said, Hearing these unpleasant words spoken by Govinda, the gopis became morose. Their great hopes were frustrated and they felt insurmountable anxiety. Report the gopis did not know what to do. They considered uh, falling at Krishna's feet and crying for his mercy, or perhaps remaining aloof and going back to their homes. But they could do neither of these things and so felt great anxiety. Text 29, their heads hanging down and their heavy sorrowful breathing, drying up their reddened lips. The gopis scratched the ground with their toes. Tears flowed from their eyes. Uh, carrying their cudgel and washing away the vermilion smeared on their breasts. Thus they stood silently bearing the burden of their unhappiness. Wherefore the gopis felt if Krishna had, has not been conquered by our love, then our love must not be genuine. And if we cannot properly love Krishna, what is the use of our lives? 
their reddish lips were drying up because of the breathing that arose from their, the hot breathing that arose from their unhappiness. When the hot sun dries, uh, ripe red bimba fruits, dark spots appear on them and they grow soft. The beautiful lips of the gopis similarly changed in appearance. They stood silently before Krishna, unable to speak. Although Krishna was their beloved, uh, and although they had abandoned all of the objects of desire for his sake, he had been speaking to them unfavorably. Nonetheless, they remained unflinching in their attachment to him. Stopping their crying, they wiped their eyes and began to speak, their voices stammering with agitation. And the gobis now replied to Sri Krishna, their voices choked up with anger caused by their intense love for him and their unwillingness to give him up. They would not allow him to reject them. The beautiful gopis said, Oh, powerful one, you should not speak in this cruel way. Do not reject us who have renounced all material enjoyment to render devotional service to your lotus feet. Reciprocate with us, O oh, stubborn one, just as the primeval Lord Sri Narayan reciprocates with his devotees in their endeavors for liberation. So, uh, we have here the uh, conclusion of Krishna's statement discouraging the gopis in this particular statement he says actually you can attain me by hearing and chanting and worshiping my deity etc and this is how you develop uh, bhava or prema uh, so you can go home now uh, simply being near me is uh, not the means to attain the highest goal uh, so in other words, he indicates that they do not have prema and that they should cultivate uh, uh, bhakti by these different methods and then they can attain prema and then they become qualified for Krishna. So that's one implication of his uh, statement here in which he also rejects them because he tells them to go home. Uh, so uh, then it becomes very clear uh, Krishna's what he means. Previously, the words had a double meaning, so it was difficult to understand what he meant. But now, uh, he very directly states his uh, preference here by saying, you go home now uh, and uh, become qualified. Uh, so, uh, then uh, they respond to that, first by becoming very depressed. Uh, their hopes are, are shattered because of uh, these discouraging words and they begin to uh, get in great anxiety. Uh, so the uh, description here is how they responded. They hung their heads down, their breathing became very heavy, their lips dried up, uh, they scratched the ground with their toes, uh, tears flowed from their eyes, washing off their makeup, yeah, and they stood there uh, silently. Uh, so this is a description of their uh, response to his words. Uh, so these are, of course, um, also symptoms of, in the material world, these are signs of unhappiness and distress, etc. And in the spiritual world, they are signs of prema. Uh, so we have various uh, um, reactions uh, in different circumstances. In joy, of course, and then we have uh, uh, singing and dancing and uh, uh, smiling, etc. Hmm? And also in prema, then we have some uh, temporary feelings of worry, anxiety, sadness, etc. Huh? When there is a seeming disappointment, as we see here. So there's an obstruction to their love because Krishna is telling them to go home. So uh, they respond with great sorrow and anxiety, etc. And that's expressed by these different symptoms. Some of these are called satvika bhavas. Huh? So the tears, for instance, uh, is a satvika bhava, uh, uh, involuntary uh, response to the news that Krishna is uh, giving them that they should return home. And, uh, and they're feeling themselves unqualified, etc. Huh? And uh, uh, in this way, they uh, express their great sorrow 
uh, not, uh, we could say, voluntarily, but involuntarily, these symptoms begin to manifest in them. Uh, so these are uh, typical symptoms of uh, the gopis when they are troubled by separation, and particularly here because of uh, great sorrow and grief and also confusion. Uh, but we see ultimately, what do they do? They, they don't respond. Uh, uh, so they stop their crying. Uh, they wipe their eyes and then they begin to speak. And they spoke also with some anger. <laughs> Krishna. Uh, so this indicates that their love was very strong and in spite of his discouraging words, uh, the, their love in no way was uh, lessened or anything like that. So then they began to respond to him by speaking in a somewhat angry tone. Uh, uh, so uh, they begin to criticize him. Uh, don't speak this, uh, these cruel words. Uh, we've given up everything uh, because scripture says give up everything and Krishna says Sarva Dharma and Parijaja so we've given up everything uh, so you cannot reject us uh, you, you, we, uh, you give instructions in scripture and we follow those instructions so how you can then reject us uh, so you should reciprocate properly uh, this is also proper because uh, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, as you surrender unto me, I respond accordingly. So, if there is complete surrender of the a devotee, then Krishna will respond to that uh, very, very nicely. And not only the uh, gopis have surrendered, they've surrendered in the most extraordinary way, uh, giving up everything for Krishna without regard for family members, etc. So this is real complete surrender. And uh, of course, Krishna says, give up all dharmas and surrender unto me. So they've taken it in the most literal sense. They've rejected all dharmas in favor of only Krishna, including their family members and husbands and children, etc. So therefore, Krishna should respond equally and accept them completely. So that is, uh, we can say, a, a, a proper response on the part of the Supreme Lord. So therefore, the, uh, the, um, their, their first uh, statement is quite, um, let's say, reasonable to make, uh, taking into consideration the Lord's own words and the nature of the Lord, that he is controlled by devotion. So. Uh, the statement they make, therefore, is not only made in anger, but it's actually a very reasonable statement uh, concerning the conduct of the Supreme Lord. Huh? So, ultimately, of course, we realize that all of these uh, words of Krishna and his projection of them were not so serious after all. They were somewhat of a test and somewhat to see the determination of the uh, uh, gopis. Huh? Uh, so, ultimately, Krishna did respond to them in the most appropriate way. And what was that appropriate way? Uh, uh, they engaged ultimately in the Ras Lila, which is considered to be the most attractive pastime in the whole Bhagavatam. So in other words, uh, the response was uh, appropriate. Uh, they surrendered completely, and then Krishna responded with the most exalted pastime, the Ras Lila. Uh, which even Lakshmi could not enter into. Uh, uh, so it was most attractive in all ways. And uh, this was the privilege of the gopis and nobody else, not even Lakshmi. Uh, uh, so uh, ultimately Krishna did give the proper response to that complete surrender. And previous to the rasa dance, Krishna uh, explained to the gopis that actually your surrender is uh, so complete that I cannot even respond properly. So Krishna says, as you surrender, then I respond accordingly. So Krishna told the gopis that I cannot respond properly to this because you give up everything, but I don't give up everything. Yeah? You give up your uh, family members and your parents, and your husbands, and your children, and forget about dharma, etc. I don't do that. 
I could not do that. So you give up more than I give up. So uh, therefore, your surrender is more than anything I can do to respond. Uh, so I am a debtor to you. I cannot respond properly to your great surrender. Uh, so that is the praise that he gives them. Uh, uh, very, very uh, exultant praise. Uh, uh, so then ultimately he says that the, all, the only solution to this is that you uh, simply, uh, your good character uh, and your forgiveness, etc., are the only way in which uh, this uh, uh, I can repay you, whatever like that. You have to forgive me for my fault, so to speak. Uh, so Krishna does recognize the uh, exalted status of the gopis, ultimately. And so here we have the pastimes leading to that um, um, great result of their love. Uh, so I mentioned previously that the path of Madhurya Rasa was crooked like a snake, like this. Uh, so there, within the pastime, there is always some obstacles to overcome, uh, and sometimes there is refusal on the part of Krishna, as we see here. Sometimes there is refusal on the part of the gopis, and they refuse to speak to Krishna, uh, and then Krishna becomes depressed. Uh, so there's uh, obstacles like this that take place within uh, Madhurya Rasa. In that sense, it is called uh, the progress is crooked. It doesn't just go straight. Huh? So uh, this is uh, typical of Madhurya Rasa where there are extremes. Hmm? So in separation, the uh, emotion becomes extreme. And that will be shown here when Krishna disappears suddenly uh, uh, before the Ras Lila. Uh, the response of the gopis is extreme, much greater uh, 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 symptoms of separation we'll find in the uh, gopis than we'll find in the other inhabitants of Vrindavan. And therefore there's a detailed description. Uh, so we never see a real detailed description of the cowherd boys in separation from Krishna when Krishna leaves and goes to uh, Mathura and then goes to Dwarka, etc. That's general description. Everybody is, of course, dying, etc. But we don't see any detailed descriptions of the cowherd boys, but we get a very detailed description of this momentary separation from Krishna uh, of, the, of the gopis uh, uh, just before the Ras Lila, in which they go into a very exalted state of madness because of that separation. Huh? Uh, so, uh, therefore, there are extremes. We get the highest happiness in Madhurya Rasa, uh, which is represented by the Ras Lila, which was so joyful that it extended for a whole night of Brahma by the will of the Lord and the uh, gopis. Huh? So that's the great joy. And then the great suffering is all these symptoms and separation, which was actually momentary because uh, Krishna disappeared and then he appeared after some minutes or whatever like that, maybe half an hour or something. Uh, but uh, that separation was so great that uh, they distributed all sorts of extreme symptoms uh, of suffering. So the gopis experience the greatest happiness and within prema they also show the greatest suffering and misery. Uh, extremes. Uh, 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 so uh, this again is, we can say, the crooked nature of Madhurya Rasa. It has these extremes in it. Uh, uh, now, of course, some people may not appreciate such extremes, so therefore they pick a different Rasa. They have a different Rasa. It's not so extreme, like Sakya Rasa, so it's no, not big, or Dasa Rasa, very steady. Uh, and then we get uh, Madhurya Rasa's extremes of distress and then happiness, etc., like that. So, uh, this is, uh, uh, of course, in the material world, we'll also find a similar situation. Hmm? Uh, there is the greatest distress caused by separation, divorce, etc., uh, in the material world. Uh, in fact, it, it causes uh, 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 such distress that um, the percentage of what heart attacks goes up or whatever, strokes goes up after divorces, etc. because of the, people get such anxiety. Huh? Huh? Uh, so the separation is also distressful. And of course, then the attraction is there also. So we have great attraction and then great distress as a result of the breakup of a marriage in the material world. Huh? 
So because of that, uh, materially speaking, uh, such uh, relationships are condemned in the material world. Uh, and better than having those relationships, better just to be detached from everything. Uh, so Shanta Rasa is preferable to Madhurya Rasa in the, in the material world because Madhurya Rasa leads to all sorts of uh, attachments, problems, karma, sin, etc. Um, intrigue, all this uh, taking place. And uh, Shantarasa is very peaceful and detached from everything. Huh? But the opposite in the spiritual world, we'll find that the Madhurya Rasa is the uh, opposite, is in the highest level of intensity of prema. But within that prema, then we do get this variation again of distress and happiness, distress and happiness, as in the material world. But it's all within prema. And it's got nothing to do with uh, material karmas and uh, material emotions at all. Huh? So this is the, the nature of Madhurya Rasa. It has these uh, extreme, uh, extreme bliss and the extreme suffering caused by separation. Uh, it's intrinsic in it. And um, we'll see examples of that in the description of the uh, gopis here. Uh, later on when Krishna leaves, then the uh, separation is greater because the time period is much more. Uh, here it is a few, a few, uh, maybe half hour, an hour or something, and then there's a, a problem uh, of uh, the gopis. But then, when Krishna goes away for years on end, this is bigger, much bigger problem, and therefore the symptoms even increase further, they become extreme. Huh? Uh, so, uh, but nevertheless, uh, this is resolved when Krishna returns finally. And then there's great joy again. So the the suffering within Madhurya Rasa is resolved by final meeting with the Supreme Lord, uh, and that is, uh, and therefore it is uh, not um, independent. The suffering is not independent. It is uh, within the uh, happiness of prema. There's another aspect of the happiness of prema. Huh? So, uh, in this way, the, the gopis are here, and we, we see their uh, response to Krishna. And later on, we'll see how it is resolved with the uh, production of the Ras Lila. But in the meantime, we get temporary acceptance, and then after Krishna does accept the gopis, then they have enjoyment, etc. And then Krishna disappears again. And then there's more, greater suffering. And then Krishna appears again. And then they have the Ras Lila finally. So. And then they separate again at the end of the night. <laughs> but then they meet again the next night. So there's always this uh, uh, fluctuation between suffering and joy in this uh, particular uh, rasa, which is very extreme. And others there is, of course, separation and meeting also. But uh, and it's not so extreme as in, in, in with the gopis because their attachment is so strong. And therefore, the separation is also intense. Maharaj, we see this uh, Krishna acts similarly with uh, Rukmini Devi on one occasion, again with uh, Brahmana Patnis on uh, uh, some past times ago, and then here we also see the similar thing. In case of Rukmini, she retaliates, again these gopis kind of retaliates, whereas Brahmana Patnis don't. So, what's the difference, Maharaj? What is it? I mean, the similar thing happened with Rukmini, Brahmana Patnis, and these gopis here. Rukmini retaliates with Krishna with a counter argument and uh, defeats. Here, Brahmana Patnis uh, don't do that, where uh, they go back to their village and then go back with their husbands, things like that. Here, we see the, these uh, gopis would uh, probably remind with Krishna. What? These gopis would remind with Krishna, whereas Brahmana Patnis go back. Oh, so why? Based on the instruction of Krishna, they, they go back to their husbands. You're saying why? Uh, no, the difference of the rasa that we can understand this one is. Oh, well, the wives of the brahmanas, the, the main reason is uh, that uh, Krishna did not break the, the rule there because they were wives of brahmanas. And he's a cowherd boy. So he didn't want to break that principle. Of course, we see that one of the wives, she is described that she did give up her body out of separation and then she attained the Lord. So in another body, as a uh, cowherd woman, 
Yeah? Then she was able to associate with Krishna. Yeah? So in those bodies, they were not suitable, just as Lakshmi's body was not suitable as the queen of Vaikuntha. Huh? Uh, so that would be a contradiction to the rasa of Vrindavan. So therefore, uh, in those particular bodies, they, they didn't associate. But Krishna also praises, you were just mentioning that Krishna praises the gopis, that they were doing so much, they were able to give up their family, everything, whereas Krishna himself is not able to give up. On the aspect of giving up, giving up or renunciation is not the qualification for Krishna consciousness, whereas attachment to Krishna is the qualification. Mm -hmm. Whereas Krishna praises their giving up. What should be the understanding there? Well, uh, giving up, in the sense of giving up, the gopis are giving up for Krishna, and Krishna should give up for the gopis. <laughs> so he should disregard all uh, aspects of dharma, etc., for the gopis, in the same way that they give up everything for him. So, in itself, of course, giving up the dharma is, is not praise. It is condemned on, on the normal level because it leads to sinful activity. Uh, so, the only way it can be praised is when it is given up for service to Krishna. That's also the sense when Krishna says, Sarva dharma paritya jama mekam sharanam braja. He doesn't say give up all dharma. In itself, uh, that would be uh, useless. Eh? Uh, that means you become a sinful person. So it's like Krishna's not telling everybody to be sinful. Huh? Uh, th that is combined with the surrender to the Lord. Yeah? If it's unfavorable, then you give it up. It's a lower level, you give that up in favor of surrender to the Lord. So it's always combined with uh, 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 attachment to the Lord. Uh, uh, so uh, detachment from material desires, of course, is another thing not giving up dharma, but uh, detachment from material things uh, leads to liberation. Hmm? Uh, so in some sense favorable for bhakti, one should be somewhat detached. But if we give up all desires, then we also give up the desire to surrender to Krishna. So that's also useless. <laughs> so simply detachment also is not in itself uh, productive. Uh, in other words, vairagya uh, is not an anga of bhakti. But we have yukta vairagya, that is uh, giving up in order to serve Krishna, uh, that is permitted, it's good. Uh, so detachment or even giving up all dharma is, is meaningless unless it's related to surrender to the Lord. And then it has meaning. In the same note, Maharaj, Raghunath Das Goswami was also repeatedly going to Lord Chaitanya and Lord Chaitanya was always saying, go back, go back. And then only on a final, sometime later, he joined back Chaitanya Mahaprabhu mm -hmm. through Nityananda Prabhu. Mm -hmm. So for a sadhaka, how does he understand whenever the spiritual master has seen you are not qualified, you are not qualified. But uh, how to understand, is it a test uh, or is it, uh, that, uh, is it true that uh, it takes more time for one to surrender? Well, it's not so much a matter of surrender, it's a matter of the... Uh, qualification. Huh? So we see that most of Lord Chaitanya's associates were not renounced. They were householders, but they practiced their bhakti and we cannot criticize them for their uh, then saying, oh, they were materially attached or anything. But Raghunath wanted to leave everything for joining uh, Mahaprabhu, which means he was giving up family connections completely, marriage and everything. So it's like sannyas in one sense uh, or Babaji or whatever. Huh? Uh, so it can be done, but it can be done with qualification. So if a person is qualified, then uh, it is permitted. Okay? So when the Lord found that uh, Raghunath was fully qualified with attachment, then he allowed him to come to Puri and stay with him. Otherwise, he said, you go back home. Huh? So when the time was proper, then he was allowed to go. Huh? And of course, we'll find that the uh, if he had gone previously, there would be a lot of obstacles from the parents as well because we saw that they were very attached to him. Huh? But then after some time, and then when he finally did go, they accepted it, they finally accepted it. Huh? So uh, there are several reasons for not allowing him to go immediately because of his own qualification and also the attachment of the parents, etc. But we see in the Madhuri Rasa, there is a, always in US saying that um, like a snakes always uh, extreme, always you know uh, 
you know extreme suffering and extreme happiness in madhuri rasam so can you say that because of that extreme extremeness this madhuri is the highest well it's got the extreme happiness so therefore uh, it also gets the extreme suffering and separation this is a natural consequence eh? because of the intensity but uh, we don't see this kind of extreme in uh, other rasas yeah, like yeah because the, the the attachment is not so strong so therefore when the, the there's separation then the the attachment doesn't manifest such sorrow and separation because the attachment is not so strong so the stronger the attachment is the greater the sorrow and suffering yeah the uh, so madhuri ras is the most intense in its attachment for the lord and therefore in separation the symptoms are also the most intense but even there is also separation in the sakyarasa hmm sakyarasa means uh, there is also separation yeah. that whole night they don't meet with krishna yeah. so even this uh, all the gopas they also waiting when they are going to meet when they are going yeah. to meet yeah. 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 so there is also separation yeah sure oh. sure but sen if there is a separation they are also have a suffering then yeah but it's not as intense certainly a separation when the krishna leaves vrindavan and then they also have separation and there's symptoms of we call death like symptoms and so many things when he goes but uh, the the gopis get more extreme symptoms than anyone else so they went krishna left vrindavan we see the gopis uh, they threw themselves in front of the chariot and do so many things we don't see that happening with the cowherd boys <laughs> of course the cowherd boys actually went with krishna <laughs> but then they returned with nanda afterwards uh, to mathura not from mathura they came back we don't see such extreme symptoms but they do have symptoms separation definitely ah jatayu jatayu gave uh, his life for rama and uh, fought until the last moment Uh, which also apparently looks like the attachment is very high to give up one's life for krishna ram seems to be a high attachment so how do we understand the difference between the attachment of uh, these two yeah, things is there in all cases in, in prema in any case where even in shantarasa we can say there is attachment because that's the definition of prema there is yeah. even in shantarasa there is prema and then there is attachment to the lord but it's much more intense in madhuri rasa that's all so uh, of of the different rasas shanta is the weakest dasya is stronger sakya is stronger madhurya is stronger or um, vatsalya is stronger and then madhurya is the highest highest attachment i find a contrast here like uh, the gopis attachment to krishna was so much even of krishna was asking them to go home they didn't give up they stayed there and scratching their feet but we find in material world the same thing some people don't get it they feel like getting it even they face failure they want to get that particular object yeah it's a lot of difference and also this leela also shows that whatever impediments we get in life keep going friend don't come back yeah well I, I, of course this is the strongest with the the gopis their their attachment to the lord so therefore we also see the greatest impediments more than with the other uh uh persons in vrindavan the, the impediment for the gopis is the strongest uh because they do have family members dharma and so many things and yet they still overcome that. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-h